Hi there, this is Dr. Linda Burke, board certified OBGYN physician blogger and author of The Smart Mother's Guide to a Better Pregnancy. So normally I would be discussing pregnancy related issues, but today I wanna to switch gears for a minute and I'm kind of going to be traveling outside of my lane. The death of, the untimely death of Chadwick Bozeman um, has inspired me to have a conversation about, about cancer. I think that his death is a teachable moment for healthcare professionals and also for, for patients. We don't talk about the prevention of cancer. We talk about diagnosing cancer. I think we should focus on reducing our risk factors for getting cancer. Inflammation is a precursor for cancer. The studies prove that. And there are certain things that we eat that predispose our body to inflammation. And I will have a link that talks about most of the foods that do that. Specifically, and this I think affects us all, sugar is one of the biggest culprits that produces inflammation in our body. And when we have excess sugar, excess glucose, then our insulin level rises and high insulin levels produce rapid division of cells and that whole phenomena increases the risk of cancer uh, manifestation. And so there are three physicians that I want to talk about that demonstrate the power, the healing power of food. The first is Dr. Dean Ornish, who's a cardiologist. Some of you may have heard from, uh, you know, heard about him. He has, uh, for the past 20 years, published studies documenting the reversal of heart disease. Normally, traditionally, when someone has cardiac disease, we um, treat them with stents. We do invasive procedures. But what Dr. Ornish demonstrated was how food proper foods, plant-based foods, can reverse heart disease. The second um, physician who demonstrated the improvement of health based on changing your diet was Dr. Terry, uh, Terry Hall, H-A-H-L. She's a physician. She had multiple sclerosis. She had a progression of the disease that uh, unfortunately, um, ended her in a wheelchair and her condition was becoming worse. The medicines uh, that were prescribed to her were not helping. And she knew, you know, because she was a physician that she was going to have to find <clears throat> another way to have some sort of improvement in her health condition. And her motivating factor was her children. She was a mother. So she did her research and she changed her diet and her motivation, you know, her goal was to stop the progression of the disease from becoming worse. But to her surprise, her health condition became better to the point where she no longer needed the wheelchair and she was actually able to ride her bicycle. And now she teaches her protocol to physicians as well as patients. Third physician I want to talk about is uh, Dr. Michael Greger. He's the author of a book called How Not to Die. He specializes in nutrition and what inspired him uh, to look at food as a way of healing was his mom. His mother was 65 years old and she was diagnosed with end stage heart disease. She changed her diet and she lived for another 30 years, which is impressive. And so, I think this conversation is important because it really demonstrates, although you may not hear about these things, you know, in the mainstream, but these people are real and they are physicians and they have documented how food can improve your health. Now they, each one of them speaks about a different, a slightly different type of diet. Dr. Uh, Hall um, promotes the paleo diet. Dr. Ornish, you know, promotes 
low fat diet and, and Dr. Uh, Gregor um, is a vegan. But the common denominator in all three of these physicians is um, plant-based food. Now, the reason I am so passionate about plant-based food was because I had a healthcare issue um, that if unchecked was eventually going to lead me down the road of chemotherapy and radiation, which I was definitely not going down that road. I was very, very you know, clear that, that I'm not going down that road. So I had to make some drastic modifications to my own diet because I loved sugar. Um, I, you know, I didn't eat refined candy, but I loved ice cream and I loved um, cake and I knew processed foods were not good, but in the interest of rush, 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 um, I would eat processed bre- you know, processed sausages, chicken sausages for breakfast and, you know, things that clearly placed me at risk for inflammation. And so I, cl- I had to really change my diet and do it quickly. Um, I quit sugar cold turkey, something that I thought I would never be able to do. And what helped me eliminate my sugar, you know, I, I'm going to call it, you know, it was an addiction. My sugar addiction was water. I started embracing water. I did not like water, but I started uh, using lemon and limes to flavor water. And I had no more sugar cravings in addition to switching to a plant-based diet. Um, yeah, I do have salmon, but most of the things I eat um, are now plant-based and my body has, I, I can't begin to tell y'all the positive benefits of making that move. So I implore my colleagues, um, when you write prescriptions for your patients for the chronic illnesses such as hypertension and diabetes, to also refer them to a nutritionist or a dietitian. Once we get to a point where we are able to treat our patients holistically, I think that we as a nation, you know, we'll be in a much better space. And what better way to honor the memory of Chadwick Bozeman than to improve our health and to remember that a healthy journey begins with what we put in our mouths. So I hope this information has been helpful. And if it, uh, if it has been helpful, uh, please share it. And I definitely thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you next time.